welcome back to my third video um, about the very interesting 2.6 changes. This time I'm going to be addressing the Elder changes, of which there are plenty and they're very interesting. Let's start off with the globals. The Warp Spider's Warp Spider Brute call-in cost reduction is very interesting and very nice since Warp Spiders are kind of a niche unit if you look at um, how often they are called in or purchased so reducing their red cost is actually making them more attractive webway gates big changes to webway gates webway gates can now carry three more squads um, previously you could only transport four squads at a time. That has now been increased to seven. Webway Gate's cost has been increased by 25 red to 75. So you cannot... Well, it's not that big of an increase, but it's noticeable. Especially in 1v1s where the, um, the source of, of red are, the sources of red are much less since there is only one opponent that you can get red from. The web ga webway gates rejuvenation field energy regeneration, and that is the web spiders webway gate, has been increased from 1 to 2 energy per second, and the webway gates experience yield has been decreased from 250 to 200 experience. Since there, the, the cost has been increased, it's only um, logical to reduce the experience that you yield from destroying the, those gates. Very interesting change for the Warlock, if we uh, simply switch over to the heroes now, is that the Warlock's Cloak of Shadows now also grants plus one energy per second uh, regeneration. That's uh, always a very nice thing to, ha to have since the Warlock is um, an offensive spellcaster, as Indrid likes to call him. Um, he he does rely on energy quite a lot, and the Cloak of Shadows, now granting um, energy regeneration, helps him out quite a lot. The Witchblade of Kernis, a very nice weapon for the Warlock, has also been reduced in power cost only. Um, it now costs only 30 power, where it cost 35 before. Um, there's nothing much to it, it's just a cost reduction. Um, the Witchblade of Kern is, is a very, very powerful weapon. I think in 2.5.1 the damage actually has been increased. So it has been buffed before, but now the... It was still very expensive though, power-wise. Since Eldar require a lot of power anyway, um, the Witchblade of Kern is, may have not been a favorable purchase um, for Eldar players now more attractive since it's cheaper. Warp Spider Exarch. Yes, the Warp Spider Exarch was hit by the Nerf Hammer, and rightfully so, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, the special attack from its default weapon has been tied to his power blades. Finally, thank the Emperor. That means that in tier 1, the Warp Spider can still teleport into your range blob and tie it up with melee combat, but it will no longer be able to perform a special attack that potentially even throws your ranged squads towards approaching banshees and absolutely obliterates them. So that is a very, very nice change. I repeat. The special attack from the Warp Spider Exarch has been removed from all his ranged weaponry and um, tied to the power blades only. There is there are also a few other changes for the Warp Spider Exarch. The teleport energy cost has been increased from 30 to 35, and the cooldown has been increased from 10 to 12 seconds. What does that mean? It means he cannot um, teleport so freely anymore. Like he will have his teleports will have to be much more thought of. They will have to be much more meaningful, since um, teleporting back out again will now take two seconds longer, and those two seconds might be the difference between 
getting away and dying. His default melee damage has been increased from 25 damage to 32 damage with all default power blades. Default power blades are his default uh, melee weaponry. Do not mistake them for the heavy, me heavy melee power blades that he can purchase come tier 2. That is a um, direct result of him losing his special attack since the Warp Spider Exarch's role is most definitely to be um, a harassing hero meaning that he teleports in, ties up your stuff and so on and so on and to be um, actually effective at that he will have to actually be able to threaten stuff with his melee prowess so increasing his melee damage was was just a logical choice his default range weaponry though has been nerfed it has gone from 40 damage to 35 damage per hit so he, what he gained in melee prowess he has now lost in range which means he cannot hide behind um, green cover for ages and just fire at you he will actually have to really think about do I go into melee combat or do I hit my uh, targets from range because his range damage and his melee damage are almost the same while range damage is still slightly higher another very important change for the Warp Spider Exarch is the entangling web has been moved from tier 1 to tier 2 that is actually a reversal since the entangling web was moved to tier 1 with the um, 2.5 patch and now I'm very sorry for that and now it has been moved back to tier 2 just ignore the seam sounds that's a very big change since now he will actually struggle again against melee heroes and um, units like ASMs, sluggers there are a lot of combos that you won't be able to pull off anymore in, in tier 1 and a lot of um, build orders that will not function as effectively anymore in tier 1 uh, for example you could go triple die Avengers versus space marines which is logically or actually a, a very stupid build order to go to since um, space marines can easily counter that by going for ASMs and the Warp Spider Exarch would just counter that with the entangling web entangling the ASMs and you could just grenade throw like maybe even triple grenades onto the ASMs and even wipe them potentially so the entangling web me meant that you, the ASMs could jump in only once disrupt and then they would have to leave immediately or be grenaded to death so that has been changed you will have to now be way more careful with your build order versus melee threats than before. The Shimmer Orb cost reduction from 100 requisition to 25 power to 100 requisition to 20 power is also very nice I guess. The Shimmer Orb has always been very strong. I do not see why this was needed. Um, I can find no reason right now at the top of my head. Anti-gravity grenades cost reduction is also very nice. I'm guessing they were very niche, um, not very popular amongst the players, so the cost reduction is mainly to... Um, how do you say? To improve on his harassing role. With Same with the Shimmer Orb, the anti-gravity grenades. You can harass with these war gears. Um, you can be very defensive with these war gears as well. I'm guessing that is just to to bolster to to bolster that that role that he has been um, pushed into now. Enhanced warp jump uh, generator cost increase. Well, apparently people in the developer team do not want him teleporting around all day long, so the increase of 30 requisition does hit him quite hard. And the energy regen has been reduced by 2.5 uh, by one energy per second 
Um, it's very interesting that it's actually the same amount that the Webway Gate Rejuvenation Field has been increased by. So, uh, Webway Gate play is um, now a way to maybe make up for that loss. Let's go to the Farce here. I've been talking about the Warp Spider for quite some time here. The Farce here, there's only one change. Um, um, it's similar to the Chaos Sorceress change. The Shuriken, her default ranged weapon um, has been buffed. The Shuriken Pistol's DPS has been increased from 2.47 to 8.5. Uh, nothing to be afraid of, but still, it just makes her more effective. Uh, actually chasing down um, and peeling off units that are trying to kite her. Uh, Farsi has always been considered to be the weakest tier 1 hero, so maybe that change will uh, benefit her. Dire Avengers have been the topic um, or the center of a lot of controversy. Their HP has been reduced by 20 back to 100 and now the uh, aspect of Avengers now grants a 20 HP increase to the squad again. It's basically what the battle equipment used to be before. So 20 HP increase, you get the energy shields, you get the grenades, you get the, you get the fleet of foot. So basically what it used to be before. Um, Dire Avengers have been um, as I've said before, the center of a lot of frustration also, since they were quite tough, to be fair. And they dish out a lot of DPS. I've done the math, and they almost um, deal tactical marine level of damage while costing only a fraction of what tactical marines actually cost. So if you even purchase the Exarch, their damage goes up to tactical marines, plus sergeant level damage in tier 1. So nerfing Dire Avengers um, has been warranted, most definitely. Now the Exarch is also getting a lot of rework here. The Exarch's HP has been reduced to 250, the population cost has been increased. That is to stop triple Dire Avenger builds with triple um, Dire Avenger Exarchs, since that will now be felt. The upkeep has been increased as well. So spamming Dire Avengers will not be as good as before since it will put a lot of strain on your economy. And since and if you bleed Dire Avenger models, you will most definitely feel it since your tech will be um, delayed by a lot. So triple Dire Avenger builds are now discouraged. Range damage reduction aura has been reduced from 25% to 20%. That is actually to fix a bug that the Dire Avenger Exarch could not die on retreat since its range damage reduction aura and the damage reduction from retreating would stack and make the Dire Avenger Exarch invulnerable on retreat. That has been addressed. The Dire Avenger Exarch is a melee model and, could, and can actually leap into combat and the leap knockback type has been changed from light weapon to weapon only, which means that the, the, the knockback strength has been reduced. Uh, it used to do a lot of knockback. Like, not knockback damage, but the, the knockback was huge. And the domino knockback strength from the leap has been decreased to absolutely zero, so there will be no more domino knockback from the Dire Avenger Exarch's leap. I'm guessing that should address all the issues that arose with the Dire Avenger rework by Kaeltos. Um I'm thinking all these changes are very very nice, they're fine. They address all the issues that people had with Dire Avengers. They now have less health. You have to make a more conscious decision as to whether you want to go for battle equipment or for the Exarch. Since the Exarch puts a lot of more, uh, puts more strain on your economy, delays your tech even further, since that's a hidden delay on your economy <coughs> by population and upkeep, and um, it becomes quite noticeable. So you have to keep that in mind when playing triple Dire Avenger builds. 
Now, holding, holding Banshees, um, there was a proposed change, which I'm very sad that it did not go into the final um, release version of this patch. Namely, Howly, Howling Banshees Leap getting removed. Sadly, that did not happen. They still have their Leap. I would have very much liked them to get their old melee charge back because it will also solve a lot of issues with shotguns, for example, not working on leaping units since while they are leaping, they are immune to knockback, which often screws over engagements entirely for Space Marines, because once Banshees get into melee combat, unless you are either the Force Commander with a Thunder Hammer, or have Purification Rites or Bionics at your disposal, you have a very, very hard time to get them off your stuff again. So the Exarch's cost has been reduced from 90 requisition 25 power to 90 requisition 20 power. That is a very much needed change since the Howling Banshee Exarch died a lot. And the Exarch's melee special knockback type has been changed from light weapon to weapon um, PvP as well. Same goes for the Dire Avenger Exarch. That is to just to address the um, amount of knockback that Howling Banshees can inflict. Now, one of the most interesting changes is the Ranger changes. Rangers have been completely reworked in their role. I'm still curious to find out how this plays out, but here it goes. Rangers' cost has been significantly reduced. They now cost only 210 requisition and 20 power. Their, popula their population has been decreased, their upkeep has been decreased. That is to make Rangers um, an asset to almost any Elder build order that you can think of. Like you can fit, ra you can now fit Rangers into any build order. The long rifle damage has been greatly decreased from 80 damage to 55 damage and the kinetic pulse no longer does damage if uh, unupgraded. The kinetic, the kinetic pulse cooldown has also been reduced from 70 seconds to 50 seconds and now that's where you begin to see their new role. They're, they're not so much a damage dealer now as they are supposed to be detecting which is their main purpose of course and they are also supposed to be a supportive unit since with their Pathfinder gear which um, has been increased in cost but with their Pathfinder gear they can further reduce the cooldown of the kinetic pulse to, to a mere 35 seconds which is quite uh, substantial if you ask me. It means they can be a highly disruptive unit that can disrupt for example setup teams every 35 seconds which is quite a lot and um, the Pathfinder gear now also um, adds the 25 splash piercing damage to the kinetic pulse that it lost for vanilla rangers um, the Pathfinder gear also increases the Ranger energy regen by 2 energy per second. And the most important change is that the Pathfinder gear does not grant increased Courage damage. We have seen Rangers in 2.5.1 being used as suppression units since their Courage damage has been increased and even further increase with their Pathfinder gear upgrade, that is no longer the case. Rangers will no longer suppress like they used to in 2.5.1. So it's a very, very controversial change, and we will have to see how this pans out, because Rangers and Detection have always been a problem for the Elder Race. Because of the high cost of Rangers, and their low damage potential that has come from nerfing their range damage by quite a lot in favor of the suppression damage. Now another um, very important change is the Falcon. 
The Falcon has been perceived to be overperforming by quite a lot, and that has been addressed. Its speed has been reduced from 8 to 7. <clears throat> it is now amongst the slowest vehicles in Tier 2. So it can no longer simply skimmer all over the map and just attack everything and kite everything all day long. You have to keep in mind it is now slower. The energy shield upgrade cost has been reduced. Um, and it no longer reduces the speed by one because that would actually make it slower than scouts if I remember correctly. So the the shield no longer reduces speed and is now cheaper but at the same time the shield is now also less effective at converting damage into energy meaning um, where it used to convert 5 HP worth of damage into 1 energy, it's now only converting 3.5 HP worth of damage into 1 energy, so it's also less effective. It's it's a lot more fragile now. So I think that addresses all the issues very, very well. Now, another very, very important change is the one that addresses fire dragons. Fire dragons have been very cheap in 2.5.1, they only cost 30 power, that has been immediately addressed, and they now cost 30, 40 power out of the gate. But they also no longer have weapon knockback immunity by default, meaning you will have to upgrade them to regain that knockback immunity, which is a very big change. Might even be a little bit too much of a nerf since fire dragons with their heavy infantry and their low health are very very fragile since anti heavy infantry weaponry is it's there are there are plenty sources of anti heavy infantry for all races so we shall see how this pans out the fire dragons dragons fury ability um, now no longer grants 100% fire on the move only 75% fire on the move so that's um, another nerf to their anti-vehicle capabilities while chasing, since them chasing down vehicles has actually been the center of a lot of frustration. They were very, very, very good at it. The dra Fire Dragon's Exarch has been um, reduced in cost, which is very nice, only in requisition, but still, it's very nice. And now the Fire Dragons have a Dragon Scale Armor Upgrade. The Dragon Scale Armor Upgrade now gives back the immunity to knockback as a passive aura and it costs 50 requisition and 50 power. So to get back the old Fire Dragons without their uh, Exarch, you will have to uh, invest 410 requisition and 55 power which is quite a steep price and we shall see if this doesn't um, push fire dragons into a very very niche AV unit. Now warp spiders have been changed somewhat but only addressed slightly since warp spiders were always fine. Um, their haywires have been um, buffed, the energy cost has um, the energy cost has been reduced from 50 to 40, which means they can now teleport even while not having full full energy and still be able to throw a haywire grenade and the cooldown has also been decreased, which is nice. Wraith Guard also big changes, big changes for Wraith Guard. The Wraith Guard the Wraith Guard's cost has been reduced. They cost 10 power less now. Their health has been greatly increased, I'm sorry again, to 750 HP and the Exarch sight radius has been increased from 30 to 50. What does that mean? There has been um, a long discussion about the role of Wraithguard. While everybody can agree that Wraithguard were very very strong and maybe even overpowered, not maybe, but they were overpowered with their fire on the move um, mechanic their role has been changed to a tanky frontline unit that 
can act as a damage sponge now for the Elder race. Where all their other units are very very fragile and cannot take um, huge amounts of fire, Wraithguard now come into place. And why are they a good frontline unit now? Because of their um, weaponry. Uh, their weapons now suppress again because their courage damage has been increased. I'm curious why this... Uh, actually it's, it's written here beneath fire and pattern. Yeah, they can no longer fire on the move. That is not a downside, but that it was a needed nerf. But their windup has been decreased from 1.25 seconds to 1 second, and the weapon reload duration has been increased in turn. But the courage damage per hit has been increased from 20 to 30, which means Wraithguard can now suppress again with their weapons. Meaning they can move in front of all the other Elder units and just suppress stuff with their with their devastating, I'm not even sure what they're called, phantom cannons. And then the other stuff follows the Wraithguard into battle. So that is their main role now. They are huge damage uh, sponges now. They will obviously synergize very very well with the Farseer again, or even not very well. But uh, not again, but even more so now, since Fortune on Wraithguard um, is going to be very, very strong, since it decreases the damage they are taking, <clears throat> and um, channeling runes from the Warlock with the Wraithguard is going to be extremely valuable, since everything will now, everything in the world will now focus down Wraithguard when they see them approaching, and with their increased sight radius by the Exarch. Um, I'm going to take. I'm going to talk about that afterwards. Um, the channeling, channeling runes will make the wraith guard even more frightening, since the channeling runes heals at an amazing rate. Now, I've forgotten to talk about the wraith guard's exarch sight radius. The wraith guard exarch was a very niche purchase because it was very susceptible to be killed. Actually, <laughs> as, um, first out of all models, because it would always just leap into combat and um, I don't know for some reason try to be the first in the enemy's face but so people would not get it because it was such a huge risk because if the exact dies wraith guards are stunned the wraith guard I have just talked about their role how they're a frontline unit but they will also need the sight but with a sight of only 30 they cannot even see tactical marines which can fire from maximum range, so they would have to traverse a distance of um, of eight to even be able to see tactical marines that can already fire up them on on them. So you are encouraged to to purchase the Wraithguard Exarch because it vastly increases their sight. It's also very nice if you don't want rangers because the enemy might have uh, detection. If you don't want rangers to give you sight, but you want your wraith guard to give your other unit sight, maybe you have a D cannon or you have a fire prism, and you let the wraith guard move into the fog of war since they are very tanky now and they can give your other stuff sight. That's how you use them now. Then we have the wraith lord. The wraith lord's population has been decreased from 12 to 10 to not put such a strain on your economy. It's namely to just make it more attractive. Um, we already see that this is the last change as well, so bear with me. The upkeep has also been reduced from 30.6 to 25.5 and its HP regen has been increased from 0.5 to 1 HP per second. I'm still not sure whether this is going to address the fragility of the Wraith Lord since it has lost 200 um, HP in one of the past patches, but we shall see. since. There are now going to be a lot less of a strain on your economy, and they have increased HP regen. Maybe it will all pan out. We will see. But that's it for the elder changes. Um, as I've told you, they are plenty, and they are very interesting. And I'm thinking a lot of the, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of the whining and QQ can now be stopped. See you in the next video.